I have tons of adult sock patterns, but today we're going to work on some nice flatbed knitted socks for children. These will fit a child who wears a size 4 shoe in American sizing. In order to be clear, here is a chart from my Sockinations book that describes the size in inches and centimeters and in European and UK sizing also. This pattern will appear probably in 2023 in Country Knitting of Maine News and Views in a written form covering more sizes. Today we'll just knit the size 4, 8 stitches and 12 rows per inch is the gauge. I'm using a Deborah Norville sock yarn. Here are the details. It contains some bamboo and it's very soft. I like sock fabrics to be tighter fabric than I like sweater fabrics to be. So to get the 8 stitch 12 rows per inch gauge, I set my Brother 892 on stitch size 5. This pattern is for standard gauge machines. Absolutely any of them will do. And you're going to be in the 5 to 6 stitch size range on most of them. Cast on 38 stitches by e-wrapping. Leave the needles forward, set the machine to knit back from hold, and knit the first row. You may find it helpful to push them forward again and knit back the next row from hold as well. Counting those first two rows, knit a total of 20 rows for the top hem. Often, we knit the hem at a tighter stitch size than we knit the remainder of the sock. In this particular yarn and pattern, I liked it best at the same stitch size of 5. Hang the 38 e-wraps on the working needles so as to close the hem. It doesn't matter if you do it one at a time or flip those loops up with your thumb onto the needles or do it three at a time as I'm doing. We just want to close the hem and as you see sometimes you have to flip open a latch in order for the needles to receive the e-wrap. Now knit 30 plain rows. We're knitting this portion of the sock right now. So the knitting down to the heel is completely straight. In order to knit the heel, we need to put half of the stitches in hold. That is, in this case, the 19 on the left side of the bed. My carriage is on the right. Also place the very edge stitch on the carriage side and hold. That's for the first sock. These socks will have a seam. It's best if that seam runs up the inside of the ankle. So we knit the socks as a mirror image. In the second sock, we will hold the stitches shown here. There are two possible ways to make the carriage end up on the correct side of the knitting. One is to start with it on opposite sides for each sock. The other is to knit one extra top row. It really makes so little difference in this gauge. Set the machine to hold the needles that are brought all the way forward and begin short rowing. Knit across. Place one additional needle and hold next to the group that's already being held. Knit across and do the same. You'll have started with one needle and hold on what was the carriage side. And that one is to make the seam nice and neat. Now for short rowing to succeed, we need some weight on the stitches or we need to hold them down with our thumbs. I have a claw weight on them and a thumb handy just to make sure nobody misbehaves. Most likely you will need to move the claw weight up during the process of short rowing because as the pocket of knitting grows, the stitches tend to get loose on the needles. Continue placing one stitch and hold after knitting each row until after you place the last one in hold, only six stitches remain in work. Now we'll short row out, which means placing an additional needle on the side away from the carriage, back to work before knitting the row. Since we still need needles in hold, the way we get these back to work is to push them to upper working position, that intermediate position where the carriage will pick them up. I am also doing a true wrap as I short row out. The automatic wrap is what we did on the way in, placing an extra needle in hold. The true wrap is a literal wrap of the adjoining needle. 
Technically speaking, this is overkill, one or the other method of getting the wrapping done should avoid holes. However, in this particular yarn, I find it's best to do both to have a really tight, gap-free, hole-free heel and toe. Notice that when there are some needles still in hold, sometimes there is some slack in the working yarn. Off camera, or you can't see, I am manually removing that slack and you must do so, or if not, you will get dropped stitches and messes in the heel and toe of your sock. We started the short rowing process on 18 needles, short rowed in until only six were in work. We will short row back out until all 18 have knitted one time. Due to the angle at which I'm filming, you couldn't see me do it very well, but I did move the weights repeatedly and you will get the best results if you do that. This should be our last short row. Now we need to knit the foot rows. Just shift so that everything will knit back of from hold and we can start right in. Knit 26 straight rows for the foot. When it comes time to knit the toe after those 26 rows, we'll place the same needles in hold as we did the last time. That should be 19 left of zero and to right of zero, 18 in work but the edge needle in hold. It pays to take time to check and make sure you do have all the correct needles positioned. I didn't. Short rowing the toe is an exact repeat of what we did on the heel. When the toe is complete, change to a completely different color of yarn and scrap off. That means knitting at least 20 rows of something else then snipping the yarn and just go ahead and knit it off the machine. And here's our sock. I am Kitchener stitching the toe. That is my favorite closure and it's really probably worldwide the most popular closure. Do that by tucking in the waist yarn and that exposes the stitches that you want to work into. I'm not going to give lengthy Kitchener stitch instructions here because I have a couple of entire videos devoted to it. And in those, I was usually working in a bulkier yarn, which gives you better visibility. So if this is something you don't know how to do yet and you need to learn it, I will put a link to those videos in the program notes to help you out. Let's do talk about making a nice seam. We want it to be as flat as possible. There are a number of ways to arrange a flat seam. At the moment, this one is my favorite. Down the edge of knitting are what we call knots, which are tight little spots at the edge, and bars, looser strands of yarn that appear at the edge of the knitting. This is caused by a feature peculiar to machine knitting. It's not really true in hand knitting. If we join the knots together rather than the bars, it makes a good tight seam. I like to punch up through one knot, then cross over to the other half, punch up through the next knot. At the moment, that's my favorite, but there are other ways of doing it, and you can experiment and see what works best for you. Working with a teeny tiny yarn and multicolored yarn, it can get a little bit confusing visually, so I usually stop, take purposeful note of which knot I worked into last, then move along the edge of the knitting to the very next one and work into that. To finish up, turn the sock inside out so you can work on the inside, get the needle that you've been sewing with into the inside and weave in the ends in such a way that it won't make a bump in the sock. When seaming the top hem, do the two layers of fabric separately. It will look much, much nicer. Here is the finished sock with seam, we'll wear this side to the outside of the ankle. I hope your socks come out just gorgeous.